Hi, I'm CJ Elmerig of TransWest Truck Trailer RV in Frederick, Colorado. If you are in the market for an extra tall trailer, we're talking warm bloods, thoroughbreds, big, big horses. This is a great setup we have sitting behind me here. This just showed up. It is a 2023 Cimarron Warm Blood 2 Plus 1. This is an air ride trailer. <clears throat> Give you a little history lesson. Over the last about 10 years here at TransWest, we've always carried a 2 Plus 1, but this model right here has evolved so much over the last few years. We've gone from one 2 Plus 1 standard to now we carry about five to six of them on order, on hand at all times. And five of those six, I would say, all have air ride suspension. Uh, it's been a really popular option over the last 10 years that we've been doing on a lot of trailers. Uh, but we sell a lot of these trailers with this air ride and we've continued to put more and more options on these trailers for those type of customers. So we're gonna go ahead and walk through this trailer, but before we do, let's go ahead and take a look at the drawing. That way I can kind of point out some specs for you. So I mentioned extra tall. This trailer is 710 tall, standard 71, but on these warm blood trailers, two plus ones, extra tall trailers, we can go 77, we can go 710, we can even go taller. But a lot of these are gonna be 710 tall. We're 24 and a half foot on the floor. We put a little bit bigger front tack room on this, a five foot. Um, and then again, we've got our two horse straight load at the back with a box stall and a side ramp off of it. So a lot going on on this trailer, but we'll walk you through it, show you a lot of the different options. Um, and again, why this trailer has become so popular, you'll see as we show you how it's equipped. So <clears throat> again, those 10 years ago, we would have just a manual crank jack. As you can see, we've gone in and put the electric over hydraulic by equalizer. It does have a manual override on, these, on this system as well, but boy, it is sure nice to push a button and up and down this trailer goes when you're hooking and unhooking. The spare tire is located up to the left. And the reason why it's located up higher is because this equalizer jack on the standard width trailers, this one here is 610 wide, on the standard width, this takes a little bit bigger footprint, so it's a little bit wider. If this spare was down low, we wouldn't be able to have this here. So we move it up a little bit higher for you. Um, then over here to the right of the jack is actually gonna be the battery box. We got a couple things going on in here. First, it's got the battery over to the left for our hydraulic jack, but it also has a battery disconnect. We really pushed Cimarron a couple years ago to put that on as standard with a hydraulic jack and what Cimarron does is they listen, they want to improve the trailers just like us. So that is a standard option. So by having that battery disconnect, which is really nice is when you unhook this trailer and you reach up and you turn that off, it kills power to this trailer. So if you accidentally leave a light on, it's not going to actually drain your batteries when you go to hook up this trailer itself. The other thing is we've tapped into power for the compressor. So that's what you see, this aluminum box right here to the right of that battery. That is all self-contained compressor for our air ride system. Really, really simple to use. On off, raise and lower. When you're pulling this trailer, you want your air ride on. Doesn't matter if you have horses on or not. Go ahead and turn the system on. Uh, when you go to turn it off, you just turn the off button, you roll it to the lower and then drain the actual cable underneath because air can create condensation which in colder temperatures like we have this morning here in Colorado could freeze in that line, crack it, cause an air leak as far as that's concerned. We've done some how-to videos on how to operate and shut it down. So let us know if you wanna see that. Uh, we do those in kind of some shorter clips for you so we can send it to customers if they have questions as well. Uh, but a really cool system as far as that's concerned. We'll talk more about that air ride here in a minute. But we've actually started locating that in these battery boxes just to protect it a little bit more um, than actually having the box sitting out. Now, <clears throat> the noses on Cimarron's are eight too long. A lot of the competitors will run a seven six or a seven eight. So from the, basically the gooseneck drop wall there to the front is eight two. So it gives us a little bit more length on these. The reason why I like that so much is if you're pulling a long box truck and you drop that tailgate, a lot of manufacturers, their tailgate will be right up against a spare tire or against this actual cover for the jack itself. On a Cimarron, you can drop the, your tailgate and you have space to walk through here because of that added length. The other thing that we do is we go in and we'll take this a case by case basis, but this trailer is extra tall. We went 7'10 tall, so six inches taller than standard. 
So the goose drop wall height from the bottom of this down to the box, standard's been 50 inches. We go in and make that 53. The reason why is all of our trucks, Rams, Fords, have been just commonly over the last few years, taller truck beds. The new GM body style has gone up as well. So what we want is we want bed clearance, we want trailers to run level. We want that equal weight distribution. So we've gone in and made this th three inches higher so we have bed clearance, adjust our coupler how we need it to, to make sure this trailer's running level and again, having that bed clearance. Three inches into this trailer, you're not even gonna notice it when you get into that goose neck area when we show you on the inside here. This is white sheeting. So the white sheeted is standard. There are other color options. There is an upcharge for those, uh, but we typically do these in white unless we're doing a custom build for somebody. Uh, then from there, you can pick like a charcoal metallic's really popular today, silver metallic, uh, black, you can do stainless, you can do custom colors as well. So a lot of options as far as that's concerned there. Now in this front tack room, I'm gonna talk about how we used to build these. We used to build these with a four foot front tack room you know, no boot box, no water tank. I'll show you those here in a second, but everything was really tight and condensed. So we've actually gone in, put a little bit of length in here, an extra foot. We understand maybe you're having, you're carrying totes with you, take up a lot of floor space. Let's give you a little bit more room. So when we step into this nice big door, brush tray on the door itself for some smaller items. Right now we've got a hose for the water tank just set in there, but great for like fly sprays, brushes, hoof hooks, anything like that, those smaller items that just you want to kind of contain. And then that step, as you can see the transition, so easy getting into this tack room by having that fold up step. Um, look, from the ground up to this bottom door frame, it's, it's a pretty big step. Now we have this trailer actually lowered right now with the air ride. So imagine it picking up two and a half more inches, carrying those totes, carrying our saddles, anything in and out of this, it makes that transition so much nicer and easier coming in and out of this trailer itself. Now, when we get into the tack room, like I mentioned, boot box, we wanted that extra length. We put a 12 inch boot box partial across the gooseneck deck here. Again, great place to throw items in there that maybe will shift, um, but keeping them nice and self-contained. We do it partial so we can do a 48 gallon half moon water tank. Now the reason why it's located there is one challenge we have is corner water tanks are awesome. They're 25 gallons. They fit really, really well in against partition walls in a slant load trailer. But in these, we're dealing with straight walls, 90 degree angles. These half moons just work so much better. We have a flat surface on the back. As you can see, Simran put us some D rings so we can strap it down, but it's close to the door too. So just literally running that hose right out the door, filling up your buckets, put a ball valve on the end of your hose so you can actually just turn it on and off out there. You're not lugging those buckets in and out. It's gravity feed too. So fill from the top, empty from the bottom, but it's great to carry water on board with you, whether you're traveling across the country, um, hot summer months, maybe you get to a show and the hydrant's a long ways away, or you have a horse that only likes water from home. It's nice to be able to carry that with you. So like I mentioned, we took three inches out of this gooseneck area to make sure we had that bed clearance. Well, as you can see with this trailer being seven, 10 tall, you still have tons of headroom and, and just a lot of storage as we can see here. We put a LED light right in the center of the nose. So you have plenty of light coverage there. There's another one actually right above the door as you come in and it's on a switch right as you come in the door. So it's really easy, but we want to have a lot of light. Again, longer nose, bigger tack room. Let's put a little bit more light. White, uh, one is standard, but we like to upgrade. And we like to upgrade to these Optibrites. So nice, big, clear lens, put out a lot of light, not a big power draw. Over here on the left hand side is going to be a clothes bar. So again, you can hang clothes to go to a show, hop in here and change if you need to have somewhere for those type of items to hang in there. Uh, some customers have gone in and added more. If they're just going to a show, you know, real long show, they're going to be there a while, you need to take a lot of clothing. We can go in and add second bars. Uh, those type of items we can always do after the fact pretty easily. Behind me where I was standing here, as you can see, we have a recessed post, so it's on the wall. 
So if you need to, you can actually remove all of these. So we have three blanket poles up high, three saddle pads right here on it as well. These are all adjustable, so you can move them up and down, completely remove them. If you're not wanting to have anything like this in the actual tack room, um, change the sequence, you can do that. But really nice to have this type of option there for you. You use it, great. If not, you can easily take it out. And then we carpet the entire partition wall. Put a couple rows of hooks here. That way we're not having any, uh, you know, tack actually swinging, any bridles, head stalls, anything like that rubbing against the aluminum, you know, scuffing them up, but also creating noise. Horses are on the other side of this wall. We like that carpet to protect those type of items as well. Then we have a pass-through door that actually goes into the stall area from right here. So you can step directly into the stall area or come right back in here to the tack room itself. So again, really well equipped front tack room on here. If you're wanting a custom build, if you need a bigger tack room, you want a smaller one, we can do that. Uh, as long as we work in three inch increments, we can build these tack rooms about any size you actually want. As you can see that flip up really easy. It's just with a gas shock. So again, flipping it up and down. Um, but again, making that transition, getting in and out, out of that tack room makes a world of difference right there. <clears throat> now we'll get into the two plus one part. As you can see, we have that side ramp coming off. Nice, big, wide, 60 inch side ramp there. We put a little bit more length in our first box stall and I'll show you why when we get to the inside. But as you can see, loading on and walking off this trailer is so simple by having the side ramp You've got your Dutch door that swings over out of the way, and actually you can secure it like we have it right now. Uh, but these first box stalls, maybe it's additional um, just equipment that you're hauling, maybe a wheelbarrow. Some people like to take a smaller cricket type uh, golf cart. You know, you've got the ability to come up and actually load those in this first box stall and take it off. Uh, maybe you're actually utilizing it for a horse, so you have that that capability as well with that box stall. Now, <coughs> let's talk about this air ride a little bit more. So we have two 7,000 pound Dexter Airflex axles underneath here. These are rubber torsion axles. We also have shocks on here and then the air ride system itself. So as this trailer is sitting right now, it's actually sitting down on those rubber torsion axles. The old air ride systems, if something happened to a bag, a line, that compressor up there, you couldn't move the trailers. So a lot of times when we're talking to a customer, somebody will say, that air ride, I don't want anything to do with that. But once I start kind of talking to them, figuring out why it is, they're used to the older air ride systems or had that and had a bad experience. This one here, if something happens, you hook onto this trailer and you can go wherever you need to. And then once you're at the show, you get home, then you can have it that issue addressed, whether it's that bag, a line, a compressor, anything along those lines there. But ultimately this is an upgrade, so it is an added cost to the trailer. But I want you to take a step back and think about this for a second. What is the investment we have on the trailer? The actual horses we're putting on this trailer itself. Think about all the miles, all the shows you go to, and all those horses you're gonna put on it. You start factoring that in there and start dividing all that up, the added cost for air ride becomes very minimal, especially when we consider this. What does it do for the horses? So much better ride for the horses. We're not getting those, you know, really hard shocks to the joints. Um, as we're traveling, it takes away 52% of the road shock behind the axles. <coughs> so think about this. The worst part of a ride on a trailer is behind the axles. And the most common uh, example I give is a school bus. If you ride in the back of a school bus when you're younger, it was a lot of fun riding at the back because the bumps, railroad crossings, they would shoot you and it was fun. But our horses don't think it's very fun. <laughs> so if we can reduce all of that behind those axles, again, 52% of that road shock Dexter found, it took away from, that's just so much better for the horses. They're gonna step off this trailer fresher, ready to go compete. A lot of customers that pull this, especially our trainers, will say they can take a full day off of going to a show. That initial 24 hours that they need for recovery time because the trailer, the horses are stepping off the trailer fresher. 
that ride's not beating them up as much. So now go back to that cost aspect of it. How much is it for you to be gone that extra day? How much for maybe added labor, added hotel rooms, added food away from home? It does add up. Once you have an air ride trailer, you're never gonna go back. That is what we hear from customers that are actually pulling these air ride trailers. <coughs> so it's a fantastic system itself. Uh, and believe me, it, it the way you notice it, the way the trailer pulls in the truck, you can't imagine what it does for the actual horses themselves. Okay, electric brakes, 16 inch wheels, Goodyear tires. These are 10 ply tires. These are also nitrogen filled and balanced tires. This is what uh, Cimarron gets from Lion's Head. That's the vendor they use for their wheels and tires. But that nitrogen fill will make it to where PSI levels won't fluctuate drastically. Look, here in Colorado, we're right about freezing this morning and we're supposed to get up to the mid 50s. So big temperature you know, fluctuations here in Colorado and it'll only get worse as, or that gap will only get bigger, I should say, uh, as we get more into the spring. We'll have those really warm days, but still cool mornings. So PSI levels in, with air fluctuate drastically nitrogen filled we don't see that uh, you have a one year no questions asked warranty on these tires road debris a nail a blowout they will replace your tire which is absolutely a fantastic option there so they stand behind that product themselves again we've got that dutch door swung over i'll show you when we get to the other side of the trailer but we've got a drop window at the head of the horse big bus window over the hip of the horse <coughs> and then as you can see We've got these Dutch doors at the back. So when we start working at the back of this trailer, this opening, the opening is gonna end up with a ramp and then the two Dutch doors over them. As you can see, I've got the Dutch doors swung over and secured as well. If you wanna run with those down, open down the road, you can. They do have windows in the back as well. So you can shut them up um, and then get some airflow throughout there. But a really nice, big, inviting opening for the horses. We got a couple different things going on here. We've got some backup lights. We've gone in and started adding backup lights to a lot of our inventory. The reason why is our truck is a long ways away. This is 24 and a half foot on the floor. We have that longer nose. So think about where your backup lights are in your, are in your truck. You're not gonna get anything back here when you're backing up at night. Really small uh, added feature to it, but we see a lot of benefit. Customers have been very receptive to it. So backup lights up high, you're gonna have two eight inch awning lights. So we have light coverage back here. They're all on an individual switch. So I can turn on just the interiors, turn on the load lights, load lights on each side of the trailer as well. So here's a good look at our straight load. <coughs> We've got butt bars that go across. Now, this divider here, this divider, one cool thing about this, and we've done this on a lot of these trailers as well, is this is a solid divider, so a stud divider all the way to the floor, padded, and then we've done these air flows, so these big jail bars all the way, the entire length. But if you get in scenarios where you go, hey, I need to haul a couple mares and foals, maybe I wanna make a couple box stalls, maybe I wanna lo load a larger golf cart in here, now we have this divider to, to figure out what to do with. Well, this system here, we actually took this from our show cattle trailer. The traveling dividers, the traveling gates in those cattle trailers, we just turned it the other way. So most of them, as I'm standing in the trailer, run this way on, our, on those trailers. This one here is gonna run this way. But this is really cool because I can break this loose. I kinda like to start bottom, work to the other bottom, the top with the jail bar, I can kinda hold onto it in the middle. And then once I break loose, there. Once I get it broke loose, now I can slide this divider completely out of the way. Now we have two box stalls. We can load those type of items in here. This will secure against the wall so I can pin it down in. So we do have the additional butt bar with the pads on the other side of this and the chest bar. So you kind of have to force it over a little bit. These do remove from the wall. So if you're just wanting to run it and make it a little bit easier, you can actually unpin those and then slide it over and lock it in. But you can actually lock it with those behind it. You're just gonna have to put a little force to it because of the pads. 
But as you can see, now we have so much more flexibility with this trailer. Um, look, sometimes maybe this trailer needs to double as something else. Maybe you want to go to the mountains and ride some four wheelers, something like that. Hey, now we don't need multiple trailers. We can just throw them in the two plus one. This bar removes as well, same thing, just unpin. And hey, we've got one big stall area, or we, again, we can do those box stalls. So it's a good look here. There's those bus windows over the hip. <laughs> Cimarron does a fantastic job trying to really maximize the size of these windows so we can get airflow in here. Cause with bus windows, you're really only gonna be open, opening half of them. So a lot of airflow there, kick mats, from those windows down on each side and at the front of the trailer itself. You've got your butt and chest bars. We went ahead and put the hooks in for some uh, feed bags. So we have those on at each stall here as well. And then we'll talk a little bit about just the way this trailer is constructed because it is really important. This is why Cimarron quality and these trailers separate themselves from everyone else. What we are standing on here is the best floor in the industry. It is a 12 inch extruded deck that locks in high and low, so tongue and groove. So it's not just one locking point that has the ability to move. When you lock it at high and low, there's less movement there, so you gain strength there. But we have four inch centers. So those are those beams that run across this trailer the entire length. Cimarron actually has a V truss in the middle that gains even more strength. But imagine hoof size of a horse, wherever they stand on a Cimarron floor, they are standing on a support beam. Go look at some competitors, crawl underneath and look at the floor. My opinion, the way to tell quality construction of a trailer, start from the floor and then go up. So best floor on the market, those other competitors, their centers will spread farther apart. Horses can stand in those areas. Over time, you get those pits, waves, that's where urine can collect cause corrosion, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, rubber mats on the floor here. So you do need to take care of aluminum floors. Doesn't matter what brand it is. So once a year, a couple times a year, depending on use, you need to pull all these mats, power wash it out, let it dry, get you some baking soda, sprinkle down, put your mats back in. That baking soda will counteract the acidity of urine just only giving more longevity to this floor. You take care of this floor, it'll take care of you forever. Uh, some customers like to go in and put like a worm flooring, so a permanent unpenetrable rubber mat, so they don't have to pull mats, but then they don't have to worry about those type of issues ever down the road. <coughs> Always assess your floor when you're pulling your mats too. It's just a good time. If you take care of a small issue right then, you know, it's a lot better than replacing an entire floor down the road. Now, like I mentioned, you start from the floor and go up. So we're gonna cap it off with this insulated roof. This is standard on every single Cimarron. So it's a half inch thick honeycomb design. It's reinforced, so it's, it gains a lot of strength with that, that honeycomb design itself. But it's got a gel coating on top. It's got an R3 thermal value. So couple benefits with that. That strength, it'll take substantial hail. <coughs> I can walk on these roofs, they won't dent. It'll take 150 pounds per square foot. I don't have to find, you know, a roof bow to actually step on as if I'm up on that roof, roof doing anything. But more importantly, in my opinion, is what it does for temperature control. So down here in the stall area, it's gonna keep this stall area 20% cooler. I'll say that again, 20% cooler than aluminum sheeted roofs. Come to the lot on a real hot summer day. We'll take you to one manufacturer with an aluminum roof step you in in a horse trailer because it's nice and sealed up and then we'll take you to Cimarron and you tell us the difference. You will be able to tell how much cooler it is in this area because of that roof and it's standard on every single Cimarron which is fantastic. Doesn't matter what model it is. There's a good look. You can see those LED lights. Again, we got plenty of them in, in this stall area. Again, on an individual switch. Two-way roof fence as well. So one, you're getting that roof, you're getting those two-way roof vents, you're getting the drop windows, the big bus windows, windows at the back, airflow dividers, a lot of airflow throughout this trailer. Think about this, this is the best way to explain it is, getting that airflow and a little bit of a cross breeze makes a big difference. Sit in your vehicle, 
And if you roll one window down, the wind, the wind doesn't move. You roll the second window down, you get that cross breeze, you feel it. And that's what we can do to keep these horses nice and comfortable by having all these different options in here. Then as you come into this box stall, we've got the two stud gates here going actually in airflow on those as well. Really easy to operate to actually lock into the roof itself when we swing them over. So we don't have to worry about them swinging one way or the other if we're walking a horse off this trailer itself. But like I mentioned, we put a little bit more length in this first box stall and this is the reasoning why. We want that nice big wide ramp, but we also don't want this door opening up into this opening. It kind of defeats the purpose of a wide ramp. So we put a little bit of length here. So again, as you're walking horses off, they can make that transition very easily off that big side ramp going in and out. Now we did put some tie rings in here. If you do want to <coughs> go ahead and tie some horses in this first box area, you've got a bar going across the opening there. You do have a strap that goes across the ramp opening here. So we can secure those type of items in, in this trailer. And a lot of customers on our two plus ones like to go in and add stall cameras. So we can do that here at TransWest. It's a wireless and by wireless, meaning we have a monitor that you can actually keep in the cab of a pickup that plugs into 12 volt. And so that way you can move it from truck to truck if you have multiple tow vehicles. Uh, but what we do is we put the cameras, a lot of in these two plus ones, they like to put one up here so they can kind of see back, see this box stall, see through these airflow dividers and see the two horses back there. And then a lot of times they'll put the a second as a backup camera on the trailer itself. Uh, but that's a system we can do here. So the, to power the cameras, we actually tap into the marker lights. So all you have to ha do is have your monitor plugged into 12 volt power and then turn your marker lights on. The cameras will fire up and you can see everything that's going on back here. So again, a lot of items or things on a trailer, you might look at and go, oh, well, I wish it had this and this. That'd be the perfect trailer. Sometimes it can just be done here and the trailer's sitting here ready to go for you. We don't have to go a custom build. We do plenty of custom builds, so if that's the route you wanna go, we can definitely help you out there. There's a good look at that drop window. So again, there's one on the other side. It was covered up with the Dutch door for the ramp. <coughs> but as you can see, nice big drop window here. The, the actual window itself, this is all framework that we're looking at. So big and stout. These are doors we're gonna open every, almost every time we use this trailer. So we want them to hold up over time. Jail bars that'll come down as well, but then we don't have to worry about a horse sticking its head out the window. Really good shut. So the fit and finish is amazing on these. I want you to look at a couple things right here. Welded hinges with grease certs, so easier to maintain. But look at the welds on this thing. And when you look at a Cimarron, the fit and finish is absolutely amazing. You have a drip rail above your door openings, like here on that drop. Little extruded piece, that's an extra step that Cimarron does. They build that extrusion specifically for those drop windows, tack doors, <coughs> this escape door right here, so we can keep try to keep as much moisture as we can away from those openings, get in there and freeze, and then you have a hard time opening and closing those. Um, but a lot of manufacturers will go in and just take a strip of aluminum and either rivet it on there, maybe tack weld it. So kind of an after fact where Cimarron has actually built that extrusion specifically for that. You get a good look at the button, LED lights on the top rail, you know, a lot sharper look to the trailer itself with those. They put out plenty of light, uh, not a big power draw. And then you've got your load light. So 16 inch above this door, and then there's one on the other side of the ramp. So again, you have that light coverage. The other thing on this access door getting into that stall area there is you have a drop window here as well. So if you have somebody in that first box stall, we can still get airflow into them. You know, we have that side ramp over there. Now in that Dutch door, you're gonna have that, that uh, bus window. So you could get airflow on that side, but we are creating some airflow here. And then we did some roof fence at the front of this box stall as well. <clears throat> what a 
extremely well equipped two plus one again these cimarron's two plus ones with air ride are extremely you know hot sellers for us they're really sought after trailer uh, this one here is 710 tall we do build some 77 talls just give customers some flexibility on what they're really wanting there so I'm going to give you the stock number on this one for reference. You can just give us a call. Again, it's a 2023 Cimarron Warmblood 2 Plus 1 Air Ride. Stock number is 5N221906. We take trade-ins. If you're looking to upgrade into something, even downsize, we can help you out there. Financing is available and delivery is available. So we can get this trailer directly to your doorstep. So give us a call. Anybody on our sales team can help you out. That number is 303-684-3400. Thanks for tuning in. Have a good day.